Welcome to the Swipe Right Effect podcast, where we will be sharing with you the power to get unstuck by swiping right on yourself. Your host, author C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly, gets personal with her guests, sharing stories of themselves getting unstuck with wisdom and guidance. Where do you feel stuck? Are you waiting to get your new life started after a big change? You've come to the right place. So with that said, let's get started. Hi, welcome back to the Swipe Right Effect, the power to get unstuck. I'm C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly. And I'm glad you're here with us today. We are speaking with a friend, Susan Jane, from all the way over in Australia and down under. <laughs> so I want to tell you a little bit about Susan, and then I will um, kick off the conversation. So Susan is passionate about the power of intuition, and she has spent several decades teaching people about listening to theirs. It's been her mission to teach others about how to use it as guidance to move them toward making confident decisions that bring them into alignment into their own truths, love that, their own core values and the fulfillment of their own goals and dreams. Along the way, she's developed tools to help people understand how intuition works and to help them strengthen that their intuitive muscles. I almost didn't say that right. I know how invaluable these tools can be. And I've learned from Susan when I was on her podcast. <laughs> so um, Susan, thank you for being here today. I am very excited to speak with you again and introduce you to my listeners. So thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Kelly. I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. <laughs> it's always fun to talk to you. <laughs> so my big question today is, you know, I've been learning so much about manifestation and um, I kind of went through a rebuilding of my intuition after my divorce. And um, so I kind of wanted to get your take on manifestation and then maybe also how it relates to intuition ah oh, great question look with manifestation that was one of my I, I'm a theory tester Kelly so I when I read books when I listen to things when I have an understanding of somebody's if it resonates with me what their information they're giving me I'd like to test the theory so I'm a, a theory tester now I wasn't so much into intuition when I tested my theory on manifestation. And, and I guess with my manifestation, I used it more as a visualisation. Now, they're both very similar. Um, some manifestations you're doing more of the feeling and visualisation you're doing more of the, the seeing side of it. But I did a more of a, a visual manifestation where I had to see it and I had to feel it. Now, with my theory testing, one of the first books I read was um, Creative Visualization by Jacques de Guin. Now, this was all sort of manifesting what it is you wanted. So manifestation is understanding what you want, and then the visualization is bringing it to you type thing. So I remember I was we were on our organic crop farm. It was a 90-acre organic crop farm, and the farmhouse was pretty sad. Actually, it was very sad, and it needed a lot of work. And, of course, we didn't have the money to do the work. So every morning I would get up and I would do this little visualisation. I'd go into each of the rooms and I would imagine what it would be like. And imagination, a lot of imagination comes from our intuition, which I wasn't aware of until later. But I would imagine what that room would look like. Then I'd go into the next room and I would imagine what that would look like. And as I got better and better at it, I would start to feel what it would be like to have that. And this is where you start to really manifest what was going on. Well, I did that for about six months. And I even, because it was about the house, I would even go into the local hardware store and I started to choose colours that I would like. I, I started to choose the wardrobe handles or the, sorry, the, the cupboard handles in the kitchen, thinking... Oh. Like, there's no way I could afford to buy this or there was no way I could afford to get this done, but I would just keep on going. And, I'm, and I thought to myself, no one needs to know this. No one needs to know what I'm doing. I'm just doing this on my own time, my own way, just manifesting, just visualisation, you know, and just being me, doing all the crazy things that I do. <laughs> so <laughs> on the 4th of December, 
we had this horrific storm go through and it wiped out, took off the roof of the house, whole roof. I remember watching the windows bow as I was taking the kids around to a safe space because here in, in Queensland, we, we have the um, the cyclones come through. So we, we have to do these, find these safe spaces and things like that. And I didn't know what it was, but it was it was actually the joining of two storms coming together and it, it just took the roof off. So I had the kids all stacked in this corner and I had mattresses up on the wall and I had the dog, the cat, the bird there. You know, and I grabbed things and they were all in this safe space. And I remember running to try and get the photos and bring everything together and that the wind was coming in underneath the wooden floor because the, the house was lifted a little bit underneath the wooden floor and running on the carpet was like running on a, a bouncy castle and I'm trying to get everything to get you know everyone safe and all the rest after losing the roof anyway the the SES the people came to help make sure everything was safe and then the builders came sort of the next day or two because we had which I didn't know we had uh, blue ribbon insurance which was all new for old old for new no new for old and um they turned around and the builder said to, and I said to the builder how long is this going to take and he goes well it usually it's it's pretty quick he goes the longest part is people choosing their colors for their kitchen and their <laughs> handle. And it was like I had already done that so the whole house was refurbished redone exactly how I had visualized it exactly how I had manifested it wow. and it was that manifestation that test that made me realise how important it was to start trusting our gut, to start really following our intuition. Yeah, because your intuition was to maybe keep it to yourself, but still follow through and and take advantage of what you learned. That's amazing. Yes. I yes. love that story. <laughs> so um, something I saw on your website, um, intuitivenature.com, is um the, com .au, actually it's a it's a oh, uh, Australian dot com dot yes. au yes thank yeah. you yeah <laughs> um is and I've I've heard a lot about this recently so I wanted to get your take on it the spiritual yes. being versus the physical human and I think a lot of people will uh will find this interesting because I sure did it was really new to me and I just wanted to see what your explanation of was of that oh, okay now I love this because this is really what intuition is all about for me I had learned like you had learned or heard along the ways that we we have this spirit inside of us and we're a physical being and the spirit comes into the physical body and um, you know we need to follow that and we've got these sort of two opposing sides and yet they're one and it really fascinated me, but it wasn't until I had a couple of experiences where I left my body. And one was one was a near-death experience and one was during a very violent um, pack rape where I left my body and watched it all happening to me. Now, when you leave your body, your spirit has no emotional connections. So I'm watching what's going on to this and I call her her because I know it was me, but it wasn't me, if that made sense. Um, I could see it looked like me, but it didn't feel like me. So I'm sitting there, I'm standing there watching what they're doing to her. And you could see the blood coming down the side of her, her mouth where she was punched. But I, I couldn't taste anything. And you could you could see the energy coming out through the back of her head, all this it, like like heat energy coming out the back of her head where she was dragged into the car by her hair. But I couldn't feel any pain. And I remember when I was in the car, the smell of cigarettes and alcohol was just overwhelming, like they'd, they'd been stalking for a long time in this car. But you couldn't smell that. I, I couldn't see any of that. I couldn't, there was, there was nothing like that. There was no connection to that, phys that physical body, except that I knew that was me. Mm -hmm. There was no, that just no emotional connection. And it was that attack and then 12 months later, I had a near-death experience where I left my body again. And then the third time it happened, I did it deliberately. As I said, I'm a theory tester. So I tested astral travel, astral traveling, which again took a few months to do. But it's where your, your spirit leaves your body. You're still attached. That spirit leaves the body and, and goes playing. <laughs> it goes off. And um, so I did that too. So I 
the, the last time it happened, it made me understand what the first two times were about because I didn't understand them. Obviously, something had happened to me and it was like, holy, I'm not talking about that because that's just right. uh, over the top and crazy, you know, so I'm not talking about that. But when I did it the third time in this astral travelling, it made sense and the other two situations became real, became a, a, a real learning curve. Mm. So from there, I then... Um, got that sort of got that understanding of that and that's when I went okay so if we've got this spiritual being and we've got this physical side of us how do they communicate mm. how does the spirit if it doesn't talk and it doesn't speak and it has no emotional connection how does that spiritual side of us connect or talk or, or communicate with that physical side now, the other aspect I look at too when I'm doing this is we, we all talk about life purpose. The life purpose isn't the physical body. The life purpose is the spiritual body. Right. This spiritual body, spiritual side of us has got a life purpose, has come into this body for a reason. And another thing that people say is, well, the spirit knows everything. Well, yeah, the spirit might know everything. And I say to you, if you've never ridden a bike and you read about it and you got the understanding and you watched people and everything else, does that mean you can ride a bike? The spirit has to come into the physical body to get an understanding of what it feels like, what, what taste is like, what touch mm. is like, and they don't, and, and all those other learning things that we need to go through. So here we are. Spirits come into our body and our body is just chugging along trying to do whatever it's supposed to do and trying to listen to what the spirit's saying to them. And that's your intuitive messages. So the messages are coming and I, that's what I call your intuition. It's the communication between the spiritual side of us and the physical side of us. Right. And, and I liken it to say these new fancy cars now that can drive themselves. Yes. <laughs> if that's the physical body and you're the driver, the spirit, sorry, is the driver the spirit is trying to go, well, hang on. Like my partner did it just the other day. He he had a, a hired car because his his car was getting in, was in for service. And he said, I got in and there's this great big screen across the front. And he goes, All I wanted to do was turn the radio on. And I didn't know what buttons to do or how to do it. <laughs> and this screen had popped up and goes, just ask me for what you want. And he goes, I want to listen to the radio. And the radio pops up. Wow. So it's this, that that's how I liken it to. So our spirit is trying to drive this body to where it needs to go and where, where it's got, it got to go. So that's how I look at those two aspects of ourselves. And I know a lot of people put in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual circles, I should say, a lot of people put a lot of uh, drive and a lot of um, a accent or um, stress on how we should be listening to our spirit and, and you know how spirit is so important and spirit says this you've got to do that and and I sort of go well hang on I, I get that spirit's there and I get that we get these messages but we are still physical beings and we still need to live in this physical world mm. um, and still need to enjoy all that so it's getting that happy balance Right. Um, and yeah, especially if you're going to see somebody and they're saying, oh, you know, I'm hearing that you should be doing this and you should be doing that and spirit saying do this. And I see them going off in a little bit of a la la land. We've got to stay grounded. We're still physical people, but we've got to follow our gut. We've got to follow our intuition. Ah, thank you for that. That was great. Um, so one of the things that um, I also saw on your website is that you do flower readings and I re and I was fascinated by this and I, I read everything that was on there and then I also saw that you have um, play activities that help people connect to their intuition. So I guess the first question is what's a flower reading? <laughs> and the <laughs> second is I want to learn one of those play activities. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> Oh, sure. Um, well, I'll put it this way. Um, they're tools, basically our tools to help us develop our intuition. So we've got lots of tools, meditations, a tool that we can use. Um, but when we're looking at focusing on our intuition, I look at three areas. The first thing you need to do is ask. <clears throat> the second thing you need to do is receive. And then the third thing you need to do is action. 
Now, asking is like is, is like manifestation. It's like visualization. You're asking. Um, asking is like uh, sending a prayer. You know, dear dear God, you know, please do this. Please help me here. That's asking. Um, asking could be almost where you're getting so frustrated and you do the you know the old WTF for goodness sake you know you're asking because you, you're asking for help or you're asking for some guidance so the first thing you need to do is ask the second thing you need to do is receive that information now again meditation is really good to receive that information because you're in a quiet space um active meditation when you're walking when you're near the water when you're having a shower when you're doing the dishes you know some of those mundane jobs that you do because you're engaging your mind your the, the physical side of you it's allowing that spiritual messages to come through and you start to get those guidance and of course the third thing again and I'm going to get into the flower readings because this is all the tools um, and the third part is act, doing the action and I, I can remember one time asking very, very clear, saying, I want a yes, no answer. I don't want to be fluffed around. I need a yes, no answer. Should I do this? And I got a yes answer. So I received that information. Mm. And then what? I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we're still going to action it. And we, we're all doing this. So we'll get these messages and we won't action them. Now, flower readings is an, a tool. Card readings are a tool. Pendulum work is a tool. All of those, those tools that we have will help us learn to trust our intuition. Again, if you action it, if you get the answer and then you still sort of go, oh, oh yeah, I don't want to do that. Let me three out of five, let's see how that goes. Um, so these are all tools. Now, what happened? I got a little bit of a download about the flower readings. And, and I, do, I would imagine you've heard of the Tree of Life where you do the trees and you get an understanding of your life that's another tool that I've got too I, you, I can do that but I liked the flowers because flowers to me represents our goals in life like the, the, the goal for a plant is to flower you know and, and produce more so I look at those the goals uh, flowers as our goals in life and when we're doing the flower readings it's basically we're no longer restricted to a deck of cards you're no longer restricted to whatever's growing locally to pick and have a live flower reading now with Google, thanks to Google, we can choose any flower image from anywhere in the world. And wow. if I said to you, just think of a red rose, you Google a red rose and you will see millions of different pictures that you can bring forward. And it's that image that your intuition is connecting with. Mm. And it's that image then we look at that image and we can go through 16, over 16 different elements that are in that image oh. that is connected, yeah, connected to your intuition. So things like the stem is about your path or journey to get to the goal. Uh, the leaves are your guides. What guides have you got? Have you got spiritual guides? Have you got um, uh, some more mental guides? Have you got physical guides that are going to be helping you? Are they male? Are they female? Or I should say, are they feminine or are they masculine? So not necessarily male or female. Um, because that's the behaviour. It could be a, a masculine behaviour, which is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more on point, you've got to do this, or it could be more feminine, it's a lot more subtle, a lot more nurturing in the behaviour, in the messages that are coming across. You've got your petals, which are all about attraction, what you're attracting or what you need to do to attract what you want. Uh, obviously, colours, shapes, the heart centre. There's so much in a flower image um, that that brings forward exactly what your intuition is is trying to tell you. So the flower images were about you being able to see your intuitive messages because we get so confused when we sort of go, should I do that or should I do this? And, we, and the head starts to think and we get this feeling, I should be doing this, but it doesn't seem right. And we, we, we start to, to go between the two and not know what we're doing. When you pick a flower image, there it is all in front of you. The whole picture will have so much to do, even your motivation, even your personality. It'll all come through in that picture. Hmm. So that's what flower reading is. And when you talk about the tools, um, one of the tools I do for corporate is we go in and they actually draw their flower image. So oh. if you're, the business has got a goal, just to make sure everybody's on the same path to get to that goal, they all draw their own flower image that represents that goal. 
and then we can do the reading. So in one of the ones I did, one of the ladies had this great big, she did a great big like daisy like flower and she worked in the back office and the lady that worked at the front did this little tiny, tiny flower in the corner. And I said to the um, the, the CEO or the owner of the, the business, I said, those two ladies should job, swap jobs because the one in the back is talking about this this whole goal and she's so passionate and she's so out there and she's so happy to talk about it. The other one doesn't feel comfortable with that. And she really shouldn't be out in front on the front desk. You know, you, you should swap places with them. And you can start to see their personality and see what they're doing. And it's not that that person can't do the job. It's that she's not got the passion for that for that particular goal. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Do you have any way to guide people towards a specific flower? I mean, does it matter which flower they pick or is it? No. Oh God, no. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. No, I don't want to. I don't want to touch it. That's all theirs. Because yeah. it's their intuition choosing it, not mine. I don't want my intuition to choose it. My intuition will help read it, get an understanding about it because I've written the book and I've got all the information. But it's their intuition. And it's really funny because I say, if I say to somebody, you know, say, you, Kelly, you've got a business goal. Say you've got a business goal. This, this is how I want my business to look. And you get the feeling and you, you start to sort of go, oh, this is what it feels like when I'm successful. You're not ticking boxes. You're not saying I've got to make this much money. I've got to do this. This is how I feel when I'm successful. And because it's a feeling and the difference between feeling and emotions, feeling comes from the inside, from within, that's part of our coming from, it's a message from our intuition, whereas an emotion is energy in motion. It's how we express it. So we could actually be feeling sad, but yeah. express it as anger. And we could be feeling guilty and express it as road rage. Right. So the feeling is what we're getting from our intuition. The mm. emotion is what we're expression, expressing. So I want you to connect with how you're feeling for your business and what it looks like. Because at the moment it could be, oh, yeah, I'm not quite where I am, Rara, but how do you want it to be? Oh, this is how I want it to be. And you start getting that feeling. I want to feel confident. I want to feel happy. I don't want to feel stressed. I want to feel right there. And then I say to you, okay, well, how would that look as a flower image? What colour would it be? What shape would it be? What would it look like? Mm. and you've got one in your head I know you've already got one in your I know, head I just did and well and well, you said my favorite flower but I'm I have started a business I mean, wrote a book I started the podcast and now I've started a business where 12 women it's a it's a program where 12 women come together and they're looking for their life purpose and creating a vision for that life purpose that they've defined and and we do talk about intuition and manifestation and all of these things. Mm. And when you were saying yeah. that, I have been visualizing it as the 12 women on the Zoom. I've been visualizing as the 12 women at the retreat around the table and on the beach. And I've yeah. been really trying to manifest it, but also visualize it. And yeah. when you were saying that just now, I went, yep, Daisy, because the center, the core is that beautiful gold, but then all the petals are the 12 women. <laughs> yeah. So, so then I would say to you, Google it, find your image, find the one that, that matches, that resonates with you because it's that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I remember doing mine when I was doing the book and I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what flower it was. I didn't know. All I could see was it was pink and white. It was a deep pink and a white and it was round shape. And so I Googled pink and white flowers and I can assure you I was there for quite some time scrolling <laughs> and scrolling. And yeah. then it was like, oh, that one sort of feels right. And I put that one aside and oh, well, that one's, and I ended up with like four. And the last one I went, oh, that, that feels right. And that straight away, it was like, no, that's it. That's the one. It's got the same feeling. And then because, because I knew how to do flower readings, <laughs> I tried to change it. And as soon as I changed the shape of it, I lost the feeling. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So no, I, I need a big with... vase of daisies right next to my desk. <laughs> well, what I know, I'll tell you what I can do for you. You find a flower that represents your business goal mm -hmm. and, and um, I'll do a quick reading for you on it. 
and okay. I'll send you the video and you can put it up and show show everyone. Okay. One of the things you look at when it's a business goal is the pedals of attraction are your marketing. Ah, I love that. Yes. <laughs> it would de determine what your marketing is about and how you should be doing your marketing. Yeah. And your intuition's picking that, not me. Right. Yep. I love that. And it has it. Well, I won't say that the Daisy hasn't been driving the marketing, but but my I've definitely been following my intuition. And part of the program is hiring um, six different masterclass teachers because there's it's a masterclass and mastermind combination. And yeah. it was such a beautiful experience to just keep asking people and getting recommendations. And when my intuition went, boop, I was like, okay, that's the one I'm going after. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and one every, way every one of them said yes right away because it was such a good yeah. fit. It was such a good fit. And um, so anyway, I'm excited. I wish you could come. We're launching in September. <laughs> oh, no, it sounds so <laughs> It's a long way over, Susan. <laughs> yeah, a very long way. <laughs> but... Um, but, but, oh. but the other thing you can you can look at oh, I lost my train of thought then um, the other thing is that daisy petals are, are very elongated so they're, they're quite masculine mm. the white obviously you will have an understanding of what white means but it's quite masculine in that in that context so mm. when I when you see that you need to make sure that you're marketing when you're putting up posts when you're when you're putting things out there is you need to make sure you're really on point don't make it wishy washy, make it quite on point. Manifestation is going to, you know, uh, what manifestation will allow you to achieve what you want to achieve. Make it really on point. Don't make it, oh, if you try manifestation, you may find that this will help you. No, don't make it wishy washy. Make it really on point and, and give them a, a real distinct um, aspect to that. You know, if it's, if it's a post, um, give it them a real one line. Don't try and cover everything. Just keep it very, very clear and very, very succinct. That's funny. I've had a hard time with that. So it's good to hear it again because there is so much to the program. It's hard to say, what is it we do? You know, exactly. we successful exactly. women figure out their next steps, like their next chapter. And that's as well, if you've, got, if you've got successful women, you need to be a lot more. And sorry, I do have a, a marketing background. <laughs> if you've got successful women, you've got to go, what do they want? Mm -hmm. They obviously don't want more success. They don't necessarily want the fluff and they're going to get the fluff because yeah. that's how you're going to help them is to do that softening area. But they want to market to them. You have to give them very clear understandings of what they are going to get from it. Yeah. Very clear. So we are going to, um, you are going to get 16 different programs or you're going to get 16 different, you know, whatever it is. Um, and it is going to be how you, how to, how to do this, how to do that, rah, rah, rah. And you're going to then be able to take that back and you're going to do this and do this and do this. So really, really clear and really, really on point. The whole program will be soft. It will be nurturing. It will because it's round. A daisy's round. So yeah. the whole program is going to be soft and nurturing. But these sections have to be very on point. And sorry, I've just gone off on a completely different. Oh, that was angle. great. <laughs> so I mean, that's an activity from a flower reading right there. And that I'm definitely sending you my daisy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, See, it's always been my real? favorite. I and my sister-in-law, we both love the daisies. So you know, when I first learned flower readings, I'd use the daisy because that's my my favorite, one of my favorites as well. It's the simplicity; it's just so beautiful. Right. So you don't have to to to. Yeah, it's so pretty. But one of the, one of the quick quick little tricks you, you can use um, to determine a yes no answer, determine your intuition, how it's following. Just stand up straight and relax and then um, you ask your body or your spirit whatever you want to call it to define yes and you will actually find yourself leaning forward or backwards and then you say define no and it will go the opposite way yeah. and then you know when I said to you you've got to ask that's when you can ask a question oh look I don't know if this is the right marketing strategy you've got to have it a yes no answer though don't make it you know to open um should i post on twitter and you will get a yes or a no 
Mm. Okay. okay, I'm trying that, that. Yeah, so that's a really good way. Should I stay with that asshole that I've been married to for 10 years? <laughs> eh, yes <or> no? <laughs> Don't add emotions to it. <laughs> And then you fall yeah, for it really fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but that's a that's a really good one when you're just not sure, you know, you know, which which way should I go? What should I do? You know, when you're sort of seeking a bit of clarity or direction, it's really easy to just stand there and, and you get this little wave happening. But just ask for it to be defined first. Majority of times, yes is going to go forward and no is going to go back. Um, that's in the majority of times. It doesn't mean that that's where your your body's going to go, but that's what I would be looking at. But um, that's that's one of those really easy uh, ways of de de determining a yes no answer for you. Got it. Okay, that's really cool. Thank you. I'm sure our listeners are going to love that. A um, couple of more questions. Um, I I saw on your website that um, you said that there are gifts that come from trauma and adversity. And I've definitely seen that in my own life and it, it, and it rings true. And you also said things happen for us, not to us. And so those two things seem to go together to me. Um, yes. Maybe they don't, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Yes, look, they do go together. And look, a lot of the times that you find that on the websites and, and areas like that, you will say the same thing, but you say it in a different way because people hear it in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's going through a really tough time, it's hard for you to say there's a silver lining there. You know, if, if they're going through it, it's really it, for somebody to turn around and go, oh, yeah, but all good things happen to us. And right. you sort of go, you know, shut up. I don't I don't need to hear that. I'm, I'm really not in the right space to hear that. And so that's why we put different things up in different ways and we express them in different ways is because we're all at different levels to get an understanding of what we're going to take on. If, if somebody has said to me, you know, you'll see the good after being pack raped and left for dead, you know, being strangled and left for dead on, on the side of the road, if somebody had said that, you know, oh, you'll see good in that later on, I probably would have hit them, you know, like. Definitely. <laughs> it's not the right timing for it. Right. But after 15, 20 years, I can look back and I can talk about it now. I couldn't even talk about it before. I can talk about it now because I can see the positive in it. Mm. I can see what happened. I can see the positive to it. I didn't understand it at the time, but I could see it now. And I could see it because I've learned more. I've gathered more um, information. I've got a better understanding. And I was prepared to reflect back and have a look. And that's when I when I refer to those sort of things, it's more about reflecting back and having a look. Are you ready to reflect back, have a look at those adversities that you've gone through and see if you can find a silver lining, see if you can find a positive to it. Um, my near-death experience, there was no positive to that. I like It was like really weird. I didn't have anyone to talk to about it. I thought I was going a little bit crazy. And it wasn't until 15 years later that I read about near-death experiences that I could go back and go, that's what happened to me. Yeah. Okay, now I have an understanding of it. Sure. Is that a silver lining? No, it wasn't until I did that astral travelling that I could join the dots right. and then go, that was an understanding. I had experience leaving my body through a very, very violent attack I'd experienced leaving my body as, as a near-death experience. I had no understanding to that. And then I'd left my body deliberately in, in this astral travelling. I got the understanding then that we actually have a physical and spiritual body. Otherwise, I had heard about it but not experienced it. Right. So that so, silver lining is the understanding and the... That was my silver lining. So it's it's going back and getting that. So when we look at those silver lining, when we look at the, the 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 gifts in adversity, it's those sort of things that we're looking at. And sometimes we're not ready to go back. Sometimes mm -hmm. we still don't understand it. Um, you know, I, I I don't get my my sister lost her little baby when he was eight weeks old. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand that. I don't don't get why that happened. But somewhere along the line, 
she will have a learning from it. And even if it's a matter of how to keep the family together or how to do this or how to grow from there, I, I don't know what her, her journey is. And I don't, I don't have to know. It's up to each individual to go back and have a look at your own adversities and, and say, okay, well, you know what? Don't get that. Just going to leave that sit there and park for a bit because I don't understand it. Right. And as you get more information or get more understanding of it, you will be able to go back and go, okay, I didn't like what happened. It's not changed what's happened, but I understand it now. During the, when, when I was being attacked, when I'd left my body, the reason why I left my body, I actually asked, I said, I can't stop these people doing it to me. How can I stop them doing it from, to somebody else? And that's when instantly I left my body and I got my answer. Now, I, you know, you can call your answer from God, universe, the greater source, whatever you'd like to call it, you know, that was, to me, it was, and I look, I don't like using the term God because there's so much bad stuff has happened in the, in that, using that terminology, right. um, in negative stuff that's happened. But to me, it was my God speaking to me. And when I came back into my body, and I assure you, everything comes all at once, the pain, the head, everything all came back at once the taste of blood all of it um it's so overwhelming so i can imagine what the spirit feels like when they come into this little body while it's in in vitro you know it'd be like whoa what's going on but anyway you come back in and what i was told to do was to pray for them now i'm not a religious person again I, i don't follow any religion or anything like that and i need you two prayers so and i did that at primary school um, so I remember out loud I was saying to them, forgive them, Lord, for they know what not what they do. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. And I kept on saying it, and I would say it louder and louder and louder. And, of course, they would hit me harder and harder and harder to shut me up, trying to stop, until eventually the hands went around the throat and around the mouth and I, I passed out. But I did that, and I had no understanding why I did that. That was the message I got. I just did it, right? I just followed what I, I needed to do. If, if I had thought about it, I probably would not. I just did it. And it wasn't until 20, 30 years later, again, when I'm starting to read about how do we get through some of these traumas, the first thing is you need to forgive. Right. I was doing that while I was being wow. attacked. Wow. Wow. So another gift, another another aspect of that wow. in a positive light. That is intense. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit crazy, and it, yeah. it gives, still gives me goosebumps. So yeah, you know, I've I've had a lot of conversations with people. Um, one in particular, I wrote about in my book, and where somebody said, "What if your husband betrayed you?" and and you ended up getting a divorce so that you could go on and do something greater, something you never would have done if you'd stayed married. Yeah. I eventually retired early and traveled for a year. Um, I've hiked two Caminos. I've moved to the beach. I've done all these things that never would have happened had I stayed married. And no, I'm not grateful that he did that. And, but my silver lining is I learned what an independent woman I can be, that I can take care of myself, that I can build something again, because I built my business and had to sell it. And um, so I think, I think you're right. And and I love your message. And, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you, but I, it, it, you're absolutely inspiring and in what you can deliver to us listening to you from that experience. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I know it's, I think it's two out of every uh, five women have had an experience like that. And so I think it's important to talk about it and to, you know, yeah. show, show the survival and thrive side of getting past it. And so I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, so, my last question that I ask everybody is, oh, wait, I can't ask you that yet. I have to ask, tell people how they can find you. <laughs> and um, especially if they want to work with you. I know you have online courses and this has got to be waking some people up, you know, given a lot of questions in their minds. So how can people reach you? 
Uh, well, on the website, intuitivenature.com.au. So it is an Australian business, registered business. Um, you can find me on this. I've got online courses. So there's things, there's course like um, tools to develop your intuition. And that's giving you all these little tools. And why I've done that is when I was learning, when I was starting to come out and, and get an understanding of spirituality and intuition and all that, um, or oh, who I was, that was another big thing, you know, because I was in a 20-year marriage too. And all of a sudden it was like, Oh, okay. So my whole life has just turned upside down. The kids have left home, no marriage, <laughs> nothing. It's like, oh, <laughs> no, yeah, I do. It's thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I put this this tools to develop your intuition because what it is, it's lots of little tools because we'll all resonate differently. Some people would love to work with pendulums and get an understanding of that. Other people would love to work with oracle cards and get an understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Other people would just like to do flower readings and get an understanding of that. So it's all they're just tools to help you. Of course, it, it's giving yourself, and the biggest thing, which is what I really like, when you do a little course like that is you're giving yourself the time you're giving yourself the space to open your mind, open your, you know, your opportunities and mm -hmm. gather other information that might be able to help you go forward. So yeah. that's, that's sort of the tools there. There's an, there's the other ones, there's like four levels of flower readings um, because the, the top level, the professional level, you can actually go and do your own workshops. I give you everything there so you could actually go in there, show people how to do, not show them how to do a little bit of watercolour work but they draw their own watercolour flowers and then you do the reading on them. So, you know, you, you can create another, another aspect. When you're talking about your coaching business and things like that, you could actually do that for your team and give them an understanding of their goals. You know, you, that's something that you can do. So it, it's like an add-on to what you've already got. Um, and, yes, yeah, so there's those coaches on intuitivenature.com.au. I run a podcast too, which is The Voice of Intuition. And I do the workshops and life flower, uh, flower readings I can do virtually. So like I'm going to do yours when you send me your picture, um, I can do virtual ones of those as well. Awesome. awesome. Did I answer? Oh, and there's the book. Oh, yeah, there's yes. the book. <laughs> and what's the name of your book? Intuitive Flowers. <laughs> Intuitive Flowers. <laughs> really <Yeah>. original. <laughs> Intuitive Flowers, Empowering Your Emotional Goals. Ah, so power, it's really power, yeah. power. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's your emotional goals, not the smart goals, not right. the not the businessy ones. It's yeah. a, it's our emotional goals. So, and of course, that takes on relationships. It takes on our health. It takes on our business. Because I don't know about you, but I'm certainly attached to my business emotionally. I love it. <laughs> sure. Okay, now I can ask you the last question <laughs> that I <laughs> ask all my guests: Is what feeds your soul? Uh, look, I have to say, as soon as you said it to me, uh, the, the first thing that comes through is I love seeing people get those aha moments. That's what feeds my soul. It's it, whether I'm doing a reading with them, whether I'm just talking to them. It's when you see that they get this aha moment. It's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Or, you know, it that that feeds my soul. All of a sudden I go, oh, oh, I got that one. You know, I felt that. <laughs> well, you must be well fed today because I think I had about 10 aha moments while you were talking. <laughs> I so, win all the time. <laughs> thank you so much, Susan. I, um, I've i been looking forward to this for a while. I took a while to connect. And um, so I'm really, I'm really glad that my listeners are going to get to connect with you as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. And I'm looking forward to seeing how September goes for you. I know, me too. I'm sending you that, Daisy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, so listeners, thank you for tuning in today. And um, I hope you enjoyed Susan. I'm sure you did. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Kelly's book is available on Amazon and through your local bookstores. Look for the swipe right effect, the power to get unstuck. Kelly's interviews with 10 friends from around the world unlock powerful truths to getting your new life started 